Hello and welcome to Purple Spaces Purple Light Up Reference Group Meeting. This is a short housekeeping announcement before we begin the meeting. Captioning is available and should be appearing at the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and will be housed on the resources section of the Purple Space website, purplespace.org. We encourage you to connect with your peers and post questions to the panelists via the chat box throughout the meeting, which we'll try our best to cover. Now I'm delighted to hand over to Purple Space Director of Strategy and Networkology, Brendan Roach. Thank you, Angie. Thank you so much. And welcome everybody to today's Purple Light Up Reference Group meeting. I, as Angie says, I'm Brendan, Brendan Roach. I'm Director of Strategy and Networkology here at Purple Space. Give you a quick audio description. I'm a white male, 40 years old, last month, uh, wearing glasses with short, dark and graying hair. And I'm sat at home in a very nice yellow velvet armchair. Um, we are super excited today about the session that we have. I mean, can you believe that it is less than three months until the 3rd of December? Um, it's great to see so many people on the call today. So I know we have over hundred people dialing in uh, live and do feel free to say hi in the chat. Tell us where you're calling from, tell us what the weather's like um, and you know, keep your comments and quite any questions coming uh, throughout the session as well. And I can also see from the uh, list of attendees that we have some long time members of Purple Space, lots of allies and champions and some Purple Light Up ambassadors on there as well. Um, and we've also got lots of new names and faces as well. So um, for any of you who are just learning about Purple Light Up, we'll make sure today that we cover off some of the background and, and, and the history um, behind this, this movement that has become such a positive force for change and, and action. So before we, we dive into the content, just a quick recap in terms of the purpose of, of, of these sessions uh, and then a quick run through the agenda. So the Purple Light Up reference group, I, we run these throughout the year. So Purple Light Up is a movement. It's, it's much more than, than one day in the calendar. And these sessions are to help us do a few things. So firstly, to help us share how organizations are leveraging Purple Light Up on the 3rd of December to stimulate and sustain uh, and develop culture change across their organizations. They help us to examine the impact that Purple Light Up has on business plans and performance. And they also provide us with an opportunity for us to update you on what's happening here at Purple Space. So in terms of the agenda, Angie, if you would move us on to the next slide. So we have some fantastic speakers today who are going to share uh, their experiences and examples of how they have leveraged the Purple Light Up movement in their organizations. Uh, in a moment, I'll hand over to Kate, who will introduce the main part of our conversation, which is all about impact. And we'll hear how Clifford Chance and TSB have used Purple Light Up to drive engagement and change within their organizations. And then we'll also give you an update on this year's Purple Light Up and specifically this year's theme, which is leader to leader. More about that later in the session. So before I hand over to Kate, just very briefly for anybody that's new to this conversation, Andy, if you could just move us on to the next slide. Purple Light Up, as a reminder, is a movement for change that was founded and is led by Purple Space. And, you know, it really has captured, I suppose, the hearts and the minds of employees with disabilities and our allies right across the world and you know much as the rainbow flag and pride movement enables the lgbtq plus community to to galvanize and unify behind this identity and, a, and you know a symbol purple light up is driving forward that momentum for for our community and importantly the Purple Light Up, the day of Purple Light Up, the 3rd of December, marks the UN International Day of Persons with Disability, uh, 3rd of December, and off, offers employers around the world a unifying hook and an opportunity to celebrate the economic contribution uh, of employees with disabilities. And then lastly, just on the next slide, before I introduce Kate, just wanted to share just a final thought and, uh, and a uh, a word on our, our founding partners as well. So Purple Light Up is now celebrated by 
hundreds and thousands of organizations. You'll hear on the call today that organizations do this in a variety of ways. So some of it is about lighting up iconic buildings, but there are lots of other ways in terms of events and conversations that happen as well. Um, we would like to thank our Purple Light Up partners, our strategic partners who help us to power this movement. Um, so big shout out to HSBC, to ABM, to Scope, to Fujitsu, to Project People, Anglo-American and Salesforce and Enterprise Rent-A-Car who have been absolutely fundamental in powering this movement as it grows and grows. Okay, so without further ado, it's time to introduce Kate Nash, uh, who most of you will know is our founder and chief exec. And Kate will be discussing with our guests about how they have been leveraging the Purple Light Up movement for positive impact. And if you do have any questions for Kate and our speakers, uh, do remember to post these in the chat as we go. So Kate, welcome. Brendan, thank you very much indeed. Kate speaking here, quick audio description of myself. I'm a white female in my late 50s. I have brown hair and blue gray eyes. I'm wearing today a brown t-shirt and a pearl necklace. And I'm sitting in my home office in Mumbles, just west of Swansea. Um, I have the very great pleasure of heading up uh, Purple Space and uh, I've met many of you on this call today. So it's so fantastic that you've taken the time and the commitment and you know, really just the time out of your agendas uh, to join us today. So thank you for that. Um, as uh, Angie and Bren have said, we've got some wonderful speakers and I know you will get some great hints and tips as to how you can leverage a Purple Light Up to drive systemic change. Um, what I want to do on this next slide, I'm just going to share with you the, the, what really Purple Light Up is all about. You know, we talk about intent and we talk about action a lot at Purple Space. And although Purple Light Up is a movement that is going to be and continues to be leveraged by different organisations in different ways, um, and because it's not overly prescribed as a movement, it means that um, a lot of organisations can be very creative about how they, how they leverage, how they mine uh, this movement to drive systemic change, which is one of its great beauties. And yet, back at the ranch, what we often encourage our members and employers to do is to notice the three things that you are mostly signaling when you choose to take part in Purple Light Up because ultimately Purple Light Up is a mark of respect to the 3rd of December United Nations International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So what we choose to encourage our employer members to notice is the three things that you're signaling or one or more of these three things. One that you have a disability ERG, um, or network and it really matters to you and that you value their leadership, their challenge and their innovation. Uh, secondly, that you may be an employer who is uh, an ally to people with disabilities. Um, that may, for example, include those organisations that may be a wee bit too small to have a disability network, but nonetheless want to uh, show and demonstrate their commitment to building a better and more accessible working world for employees with disabilities. So it's a great way of doing that. And then lastly, um, it's about signalling perhaps that disability is on your board agenda and that particularly chimes for maybe some of those organisations who are members of Valuable 500, a fantastic campaign. Um, so again, a great way of supporting your board to notice maybe some of the strategic imperatives in building an accessible world. Um, on that next slide, if I may, Angie, um, the... Um, the, 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 the kind of things that organisations are doing are just many and plentiful now. Um, and of course, in support of our members, what we're always encouraging uh, members to do is to think about impact, you know, how, how, to, how to make it, uh, how, how to demonstrate the impact over time. You know, we, we talk about practical outcomes lead to long-term change, uh, how sometimes to articulate that impact and indeed how to measure it. You know, notoriously campaigns like Purple Light Up are incredibly difficult to quantify and to measure success over time. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit how some organisations are doing that. But what we would always encourage you to do is to think about the aims 
uh, before you, you 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 start to craft your own campaign. Um, so we, we know many hundreds of organisations are leveraging Purple Light Up uh, in the most incredible manner and it is creating long-term change. But what we wanted to do and what we've been doing the last few months is really to make it easier for uh, maybe some newbies or those of you who have taken part and want to do it better to really notice what those impacts are over time. So this year, for the first time, we have been working with uh, seven organisations uh, to help support them to come up with a storyboard. And it's really about um, how they have delivered uh, their own engagement activities as part of Purple Lighter. That's really what the storyboards are all about. And we've got two today. We've got Clifford Chance and TSB. And what they'll be doing is sharing their, their storyboard um, over the coming weeks. We're going to be publishing all seven of those storyboards on our website and by other means. And just to plop into your mind, it's highly likely that Purple Space members will be offered uh, the ongoing opportunity to develop your own storyboards and we can support you in that um, so that you can upload them either to your own intranet, certainly on the Purple Space website so you can uh, share your intent and your impact with other organisations. Um, but my advice is always to start with the aims in mind. And I suppose to assume the need somewhere within the organisation to answer the question at some stage, how did you drive engagement via Purple Light Up and what impact did it have? Uh, we at Purple Space obviously want to tell the story of Purple Light Up through the eyes of many of our members. And as I say, we'll be developing a plan to get all of our community who leverage the movement uh, to create these stories board. So watch this space is our key message. Um, however, of course, for those of you who are raring to go, Brendan and the team will provide details at the end of this webinar if you want to get in touch with us very early on to see how you can start to think about your own storyboards. So without any further ado, I am delighted to hand over, now they're going to be switching their videos on, I think, in a moment, um, to hand over to two co-chairs of uh, Clifford Chance Enable Network. So we have uh, Lou Zaba, Louise Zaba, hello Lou, and okay. we have uh, Shika uh, Patel. Um, and they are two extraordinary individuals who we've had a great pleasure and great fun in working with now for I think over a year. Um, but I'm going to hand the floor to you. You're going to tell us about your storyboard and how you're leveraging Purple Light Up, not just within the UK, but across the world to drive systemic change. Over to you both and thank you for joining. Lovely. Thank you very much, Kate. And um, hello, everybody. Um, firstly, thank you for inviting us, Kate, Bren, Angie, to speak about what Clifford Chance has done in terms of hashtag Purple Light Up and how we've leveraged the movement to help grow our Enable network globally. Um, as, my name is Lou Zabar. I'm a white female, brown blonde hair, blue glasses and wearing a purple dress today. And I'm sitting in one of our meeting rooms here in London. My day-to-day -day role is I'm responsible for our global supplier management and sustainable procurement programs at Clifford Chance, but I'm also co-chair of our Enable Network. Diversity and inclusion is something that is incredibly important to our firm, but our procurement team was particularly proud to win our SIPS Diversity and Inclusion Award in 2020 and recognition for the work that we're doing this, in this space under the, leadership team, under the leadership of Chris Emberton. Ashika, over to you. Thank you very much, Lou. So my name's Ashika Patel and my description is Indian female. I have um, black, slightly brown uh, hair and um, I'm wearing a blue dress. I'm also sitting um, in my office um, on the 30th floor, actually, right at the top floor of Clifford Chance, which is a um, really nice view from um, outside. And um, uh, my role is as senior HR manager here at Clifford Chance, so a business partnering role. And as Lou said, I'm a co-chair, fellow co-chair for Enable. Lovely, thank you, Ashika. And as we move to the next slide, uh, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with Clifford Chance, we're an international law firm with 32 offices in 22 different countries. We provide legal services across the key markets of America's 
Asia Pacific, Europe, the Middle East and Africa, specialising in capital markets, corporate mergers and acquisitions, finance and banking, real estate, tax, pensions and employment and litigation and dispute resolution. Our vision is to be the global law firm of choice for the world's leading businesses of today and tomorrow, and we have various boards and governance in place to support us in the delivery of our vision and strategy. As we move to the next slide, we're very committed to creating an inclusive workplace here at Clifford Chance, in which each and every colleague can thrive. And when we're talking about inclusion being a matter of justice, as a law firm, we believe we're well placed to deliver and to support this. At Clifford Chance, we want to let people play to their strengths, and that means creating the right culture and environment for them to succeed. Enable provides the building blocks for us to continue to build disability confidence from the inside out. And through the network, we aim to support colleagues with a disability, long-term injury or condition, or workplace adjustment to thrive at Clifford Chance. And we strive to provide a safe, inclusive and open environment for them to share their lived experiences. As we move to the next slide, we're now in year three of being part of the Purple Light Up movement. But last year's campaign had a huge impact and saw us grow our network globally, highlighting the importance of disability inclusion worldwide and drawing attention to the economic contribution of employees with disabilities around the world. The aims of our campaign were to reinforce our commitment to creating a truly inclusive workplace, raising awareness of visible and non-visible disabilities, including the diversity of working needs, both in the firm and beyond, creating conversation internationally and internally about our disability network, including its rebrand as Enable and mission statement, helping to develop and grow Enable's network, grow Enable's reach across our global network, and to promote our global partnerships and commitments with the Valuable 500 and Purple Space. I'm now going to hand over to Ashika to talk more about the impact of the campaign and the effect that it's had on colleagues within the firm. If you could move to the next slide, please, Angie. So as Lou said, um, we've, uh, we're now going to be in our third year of um, supporting a hashtag purple light up. Some of the things that we got involved with um, last year, so we had a 24-hour global broadcast with our very own Lou Zaba, who spoke on the panel um, with Purple Light Up individuals as well, um, exploring, exploring mainly the role that ERGs and networks play in the promotion of disability inclusion. We also had our own internal event um, with a, a panel committee, which was with the International Paralympic Committee. We we're very pri privileged and honoured, actually, to, to be working with them as a, as a client and so really leverage this relationship to help relaunch our UK Disability Action Group to now what we call Enable with a new strategy, purpose and, and rebrand. Um, and then we had a lot of activity on our internal social media channel called Yama. We had individuals posting photos of themselves wearing purple, pictures of vases that were purple, food that was purple, um, and really sharing that supportive message um, and showing their support for International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Um, and then finally, we lit up our um, buildings purple um, across a number of our offices around the world. So. Um, as you can see, the impact um, uh, since then has been phenomenal for Enable. The, the December event that we had and the support that we had from um, Purple Space and Purple Light Up has been incredibly amazing. Um, we have had, uh, as you can see here, 49 posts with 307 reactions. Here's some of our wonderful colleagues posting themselves wearing pur um, purple. People shared some really inspiring personal stories stories, messages of support. Um, and as you continue, thank you very much, Angie. We've got some more um, individuals sharing their stories. Um, our Yama group was very, very active, but I think more broadly than, than the Yama group, what's been phenomenal for our uh, Enable network has been um, the, the awareness that's been generated across the firm for um, not just Enable, but disability generally. And we have had people coming up to Lou and I asking us, you know, how they can get involved. This has been so eye-opening for them. 
and it's been such a wonderful journey um this past year um following the the relaunch and rebrand um back in december so we're, we're super excited for what we're going to be doing this year if you go to the next slide please angie and then finally here you can see um, we had, um, uh, we also posted many of our articles on our um, internet page and we received um, some of our most read um, articles across the, across the year. We've had 42,000 impressions, 436 likes and 17,000 clicks. So the articles that we've been sharing around people's stories, the the purple hashtag light up initiative itself um, was followed by almost 200,000 people. So um, very, very great interest on uh, in this space for us. And here are some of our wonderful buildings um, lit up purple across across the globe. Next slide, please, Angie. Thank you. And I hand back over to Lou. Um, so what Lou will now talk about is just around how that impact has continued for, for Enable and what we're going to be doing next. Lovely. Thank you, Ashika. So I think December, you know, since December, Enable has gone from strength to strength with um, chapters of the network launching in Asia Pacific, Americas, Amsterdam, Spain, as well as the UK. And, and I think Understanding the lived experience of our colleagues has, has been central to our disability inclusion strategy. Um, we've been able to, through our um, internal storytelling campaign, raise awareness of visible and non-visible disabilities and the diversity of working needs across our firm. The premise of our storytelling campaign was really around debunking the myths and stigmas surrounding the umbrella term disability and our, our storytelling campaign has enabled us to speak to people across the firm to find out about their or their family members lived experience and what it means to them in their day-to-day -day role here at Clifford Chance. And Ashika and I are hugely proud as um, our comms team have shared with us that it's the most successful campaign that, or one of the most successful campaigns that they've run. So it's been really, really important for us and, and really pivotal at really putting disability inclusion at the heart of the boardroom agenda and, and generating conversation across our organisation. As we move to the next slide, um, in addition to the, the hugely positive and, and powerful storytelling campaign that we've run, we've also had a number of other highlights. We've launched a trainee tailored adjustment plan. We've started to generate conversations around how we can improve and enhance our workplace adjustments processes. Tin and Brady, our Global Director of Inclusion, featured in Purple Spaces Spotlight on interview series with Brendan, um, speaking about disability inclusion at the firm and what it means for us. Um, and I think, you know, we're still on a journey, um, but as, as we move to, to the next slide, um, we know that we can take the, the commitments that we've made. Um, you know, we've signed up to the Valuable 500, we've partnered with Purple Space, and we really want to, to take our, our commitments to disability inclusion further. And, and these are some of the things that we've, we've um, done since, since um, our, our uh, relationship with, with Purple Space and when that started. We've partnered with a coalition of global organisations and business leaders who are committed to advancing mental health awareness and best practices in the workplace. And through that, we've launched the Global Business Collaboration for Better Workplace Mental Health. Um, our global managing partner, Matthew Layton, joined UK businesses in signing an open letter to urge UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson to deliver an ambitious and transformative plan um, that enabled persons with disabilities and, and really ensured it, it helps to ensure that everyone can, can realise their potential. And we've also expanded um, or in the process of expanding our participation in the Mansfield Rules certification process, um, really looking at becoming inaugural participants um, in the Mansfield Rule UK, which helps to measure law firms and, and um, making sure that we're considering at least 30% women, racial and ethnic minorities, LGBTQ plus lawyers and lawyers with disabilities for leadership and governance roles. Um, 
as well as equity partner promotions, formal client pitch opportunities and senior lateral positions. So we've made huge progress um, since uh, since we, we, we launched Enable last year or rebranded as Enable, should I say, um, and uh, our, our progress um, to, to really drive disability um, inclusion and uh, drive positive social change continues and, and we're still continuing on that journey. So that's everything from, from Ashika and myself in terms of our storyboard and the, the work that we, we've been doing here um, at Clifford Chance, um, but happy to, to um, answer any questions you may have, Kate, um, and also any questions from the audience as well. Wonderful, Kate speaking here. Lou, Ashika, that is absolutely splendid. Do you know, it's funny, we try not to use the word use around purple light up because it always feels slightly mercenary to use a movement. But you know, I think you've earned the right to <laughs> easily say that you use, you mine, you lever this movement in such an extraordinary way to drive action and drive long-term sustainable change when it comes to building an inclusive world. So look, I've had one private question. So this is an organization who's thinking about getting involved in Purple Light Up. So it's an anonymous question to me and they just simply ask, what would your top tip be? Because here we are at the end of September you know, just about to hurtle into autumn. They can't do everything, but what would your top tip be for an organization who'd like to take some baby steps in getting involved in Purple Light Up? I think um, from our perspective, Kate, um, the, the, the thing that really helped um, enable and all the endeavors that we had for hashtag Purple Light Up were having really strong comm support. Um, we could not have done it without our comms team. Um, that's looking at that both internally, but also externally. They were able to utilize social media channels um, and really helped create noise because we can have all, we can all do all the best endeavors in the world, but if we don't get people talking about it and, and really marketing it, um, it, it, it doesn't do it justice really. And so I think it, that has been key and we've had some phenomenal comms support. Actually, it's our comms team that, and put these slides together for us that's how invested they are so um for me that would be my top tip really get your comms team engaged and bought into to what you're trying to do lovely Lou what about yourself I think have that have the conversations early um you know we we've created we've set up a working group within our enable network focused on on the purple light up movement and the initiatives that we we're starting to plan for this year um so so having that working group is helpful mm. um because at the end of the day the enable network isn't just Ashika and I there's a whole team of people sitting behind us that help have helped us to deliver this from the comms team as, as Ashika said our um digital marketing social media channels um, all of those things as well as our facilities team so when you're lighting up buildings to um, create creating purple food um, that also um, requires um, help and support and so our catering teams um, and also our facilities teams more broadly have been absolutely fantastic so engaging them early um, mm -hmm. to get um, to, to help lighting up the buildings um, have, has been absolutely um, crucial to, to the delivery and the success that we had last year. And you'll be surprised um, how engaged people can really get when, when people are given the opportunity. I mean, last year, our catering team, as an example, offered to do a video. Our, our head chef did a video on, you know, how to make purple cupcakes that we were able to post out. So I think it's really nice to see how people can feel inspired. And no, no idea is a bad idea, you know, as, as um, uh, you know, as innovative you can, as you can be. Wonderful. Great answers, really great answers. I know people will be absorbing this. Um, one last quick question, if I may, before we hand to TSB. Um, you know, how central do you think, I mean, we're all living now in a supercharged digital era uh, and, and many organisations are in the throes of delivering their hybrid working policies. And we're going to see that for a long time yet. How helpful has digital working uh, been in terms of promoting uh, the the, uh, the the use of of purple light up and how you've mined that. 
Chica, maybe? Or Luke. There we go. No, go on, Leo. She's about to speak. I was going to say, I, I think it's been hugely powerful. I think it's it's allowed us to think differently around how we present the information. So mm -hmm. there's been a greater focus on, on captions for our events, um, the audio descriptions that we've shared. We've, we've actually um, learned a lot through the process and, and had feedback from the different forums that we've attended. And I think in terms of the, the digital platforms, our, our brand um, community communications and marketing teams are very creative so from guidance around how we you know things that we could do with our website just simply to to make the the backdrop purple for for the for the um for the day through to things that we've done on our intranet pages um and you know again these things that working closely with the it teams and digital teams has been really helpful for us because they're very creative and as ashika said actually have been um, really excited to be part of it um so I, I i think it's allowed us to think differently around how we present and how we engage our audience um and and use different mediums to connect as well yeah, and just to add to that, I think particularly in now in the hybrid working world, it it does create more opportunity to leverage some of these platforms and um and technology in particular. Yeah, love it. Look, we could keep you till midnight. However, we've got two more beautiful speakers. So for the moment, Lou and Ashika, thank you so much for one uh, being one of the seven in terms of creating your storyboard, to sharing it early um, and for just doing your bit to spread the word of how important and instrumental this movement is for change. We applaud you. So I think you're going to stay with us for the rest of the session. There may be some questions you might want to drop in and say hi to those who've been able to join us live today of course this will be recorded for those asking around the materials we're using absolutely we'll make sure that these are available so fear not there'll be lots of opportunities to absorb these messages so for the moment Lou Ashika thank you we'll stand you down and we're going to say now so as this, their cameras go off and we welcome uh, Suzanne Cassidy and Tracy McAvoy from uh, TSB um, I can see Suzanne hi Suzanne lovely to see you and I'm pretty certain that Tracy will be with us shortly. So again, warm welcome for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your time. You're gonna tell us how you have made impact at TSB and beyond uh, through mining Purple Light Up. So I'll just allow you to take to the floor. Great. Um, thank you so much, Kate and Angie and Brendan for inviting us to join you. Um, we're delighted to be able to do so. My name is Tracy McAvoy. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs of the TSB Ability Network. Uh, for the audio, audio descriptions, I am a white female. I'm wearing a black and green shirt. I have auburn hair, which is tied up and probably falling down by now. Um, I'm in a home office uh, just outside London. So I'll start by telling you just a little bit about TSB. Um, as a bank, if, you, if you're not familiar with us, we, we're a retail high street bank. Uh, we have a history of over 200 years having started in Scotland as a savings bank. And we are committed to reflecting the communities in, in which we serve. And, and obviously building a diverse and inclusive culture is one of the things that we do. It's not just something that we want to talk about. It's something that we actually believe in. Um, we have a do what matters plan for our business, which we, we share um, publicly. And through that, um, we, we try to build a TSB for everybody. Within our networks, we have um, a, a number of diversity strands. So we have ourselves who represent um, customers, sorry, represent employees, or we call um, with um, sort of long-term health conditions or chronic illnesses disabilities if you like and then we also have our ethnicity network uh, we have a gender balance network and we have an lgbtq plus network and we all work very closely together um, on intersectional events um, which is, is great for us um, from a disability perspective uh, tsb is, has disability confident leader status in the the government's disability confidence scheme we are members of the Value 500 and Valuable 500, um, as, as Club for a Chance referred to. We also publish um, our diversity data and publish both our targets and what we've achieved. 
In terms of our disability targets, um, we aim for a minimum of 19% um, of our employees, and we're really creeping just over that target. And as we have um, nearly 300 branches and around 7,000 partners, you know, that's quite a number of people. So we're really pleased to do that. Um, Ability at TSB, as I said, is one of several networks. Um, Suzanne is going to take over for me in a moment and she's going to talk about Purple Light Up and some of the impacts that's had. Um, but as well as supporting um, partners with disabilities, we also have strong links to our vulnerable customer team so that the people in our branches and, and providing our services can leverage our experiences to help our customers too. And we've recently adopted a slightly different take on what used to be our workplace adjustment scheme which is to bring it in as a workplace passport scheme. So we have a scheme that goes um, with the individual rather than with the job. Um, and we try and tailor it to as much as possible to, your, to their needs. And that can include caring responsibilities um, as well as different adjustments that you might need, whether they're for visible or non-visible disabilities. So I'm gonna hand over to Suzanne to talk about um, why we're involved with Purple Light Up, what we did last year, and what we hope to do um, as we go into this year. Thanks so much, Tracy. So um, for the audio description, I'm Suzanne Cassidy. I'm a white female, mid thirties with red slash brown hair. I wear glasses and today I'm wearing the TSB uniform because I actually work in a branch and that's where I am today. So if you hear lots of banging and crashing behind me, I apologise. I have tried to um, influence my colleagues, but I still get in a few crashes. Um, so why purple light up? So, you know, for us uh, over the last couple of years, we, we have been working on building our purple light up presence, if you, if you will, where we, we use it as like our pinnacle event of the year it comes at the end of the year so that fits in nicely ties things up for the end um and it's a great way to to celebrate our achievements we feel you've got on the screen a little quote from me as a disabled employee it's really important that we, we're part of purple light up um because you know if you are disabled and in work um it's so it's it's not always easy and it should be celebrated the effort that we're all putting forward so why we celebrate um, Purple Light Up, um, just because it, it matters and it, you know, Tracy discussed there that it's part of our Do What Matters plan as well. It's important for us that, you know, our customers know that we're committed to um, disability uh, inclusion and that our colleagues do as well so that they, they feel welcome to work here. So if we talk then about the impact of Purple Light Up, um, which will be the next slide, please, Angie. In fact, we'll talk about, sorry, TSB turning purple. So we've got all of our pictures here of lovely people in branches taking part. Um, and then on the next slide, we talk about um, our internal comms. Uh, we had lots of different uh, internet stories throughout the week. We uh, rebranded as well to Ability. Um, and then on the next slide, we talk about our LinkedIn articles. No, our digital boards, uh, which was where we, um, we, we asked our um, marketing to devise something. We have lots of, um, of these electronic branches, uh, boards in branches. So just to show that we're celebrating it and it starts a conversation with customers as well. Um, so they're wondering why we're all dressed in purple. They can see um, just by typing in the, the hashtag purple light up, uh, what it's all about. And we gave them a little education as well. And then I think the next slide, is going to be talking about our LinkedIn activity. So we had um, we had pieces on a couple of different colleagues, but we also were lucky enough to have um, two Paralympians in um, a podcast where we talked about um, being disabled and being more inclusive. So on to the next slide. Now we talk about the impact. <laughs> um, so as you can see from the pictures, we had the dress down. Um, we also had internal podcasts where we talked about um, non-visible disabilities and our vulnerable customers team uh, did a podcast on the different help and support that's available to our disabled customers. 
We um, rebranded the network, as already discussed, with ability. Uh, we felt that reflected more about, it was, it was a better word than disability because it automatically uh, talks about what we can do rather than what we can't do. Um, we also had um, a great comms plan where we, um, we were trying to uh, celebrate and raise awareness. And also we encourage people to talk on Yammer. We um, also um, because of um, because of this engagement and the talking more about the impact, we we have found that our like Clifford Chance, we're on our third year now, and um, we found that um, last year was actually our most engaged year. And how we achieved that was we um, we set up a, a scheme where there were uh, five to ten. Uh, champions for each region who spoke about Purple Light Up with their teams in branches to move it more from a head office event to one where um, the branches could get more involved and they encourage Purple Dress Down and discussions about Purple Light Up and what it's all about. We also had our executives getting on board. They um, they use the purple backgrounds on their call for that day. And as, as a result of that, we actually saw um, increase in our Yama posts by a massive 179% in some areas. Um, it's also paved the way for our Speak Up campaign, which is a, is a storytelling campaign where people can be honest about being disabled at work. Um, and then if we go on to the next page about you know, there's still more to do. So for this year, we want to actually get purple board buildings on board. We are li liaising with our property team to get that to happen because we haven't done that as yet. Um, we're also trying to move to more, towards a more um, um, intersectional um, approach. So we are teaming up with our ethnicity network to deliver um, a disabled Paralympian um, chat on Purple Light Up. So yeah, that's pretty much it from me, but would welcome any questions. Absolutely wonderful, breathtaking. So look, a couple of questions from me. One is the statistic you gave on Yama. You said it's up by 179%. So the, the question is, what do you think makes that statistic so high? What is it that is happening? What is the emotional connection between your people and Purple Light Up that drives that engagement? Suzanne, what are your thoughts there? So really, I think that, you know, for the first two years with Purple Light Up, we were being um, more of a, it was more of a head office event. So my suggestion when I came on board with the Ability Network, working in a branch and knowing how it works and what can be done, I suggested getting um, the regional champions to get on board. And this is, this is the thing that we saw really pushed engagement because everybody was aware of it. It was being discussed um, in regional meetings throughout the country. Um, and the people that we got on board to be the champions were obviously very passionate about um, disability inclusion in the first place. So they were they were the perfect people to, to drive the message forward. Wonderful. Yeah, I love it, Suzanne. Just building on that, if I may, um, you, 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 you've, you've mentioned the Speak Up um, campaign and you've shared a little bit more with us about what that's all about. Again, can you just offer a little bit of more context as to how you've been able to connect the Speak Up campaign with Purple Light Up throughout the year? You know, what, what is the connection between those two? So really, um, it, it, Speak Up is about, it started in fact with MS Awareness Week. So because people know that TSB support Purple Light Up, they know that we're committed to, to being a, an inclusive uh, company, they, during MS Awareness Week, it meant that I could um, get people on board to be able to share their personal stories of the condition. Um, and it, it's built from Purple Light Up because that is our overall um, event for the year. We do lots of like little bits here and there with different events, but Purple Light Up brings it all together. And yeah. that's, that's where it has paved the way for Speak Up, definitely like it 
And then one more question from me um, would be, I'm just thinking about the, what's on the minds of our ERG leaders. How would you connect, I suppose, the texture and the delivery of your, of your disability network with the success of Purple Light Up? How, how central has been uh, your involvement in Purple Light Up in driving the impact via the ERG? So um, I think it's been crucial <laughs> for us to build around purple light up. As Susanna's mentioned, it draws everything for us together. Um, throughout the year, we do have things like um, mental health awareness. We have autism awareness and we sort of have used that. I think what we've also seen with purple light up is the willingness from our executive sponsors um, to get involved has really given us some more traction and it, it has built throughout the year as well so it has such a lasting impact um, where we've had executives who've been prepared to share personal stories of their families or their, their own experiences and, and it's something that we would never have seen before and, and it sort of has built from Purple Light Up. Um, so I think there are a few things and, and it's just about us learning all the time. Um, we learned that we couldn't run um, a network from head office um, and, and that was a huge thing. And as Suzanne has said, sort of rolling out to the branches has made a massive difference. Um, we've learned, as Clifford Chan said, that we needed to start planning early. Um, we learned that not everything we did would work um, and that was okay because a lot of the things that we did did work um, and we've sort of built on those and the intersectional approach I think has also sort of helped us steamroll us through because looking at our priorities sort of working with our LGBTQ plus team on pride working with everything together that really did give us more momentum than we'd ever had before so I I think it all has this foundation, but but certainly Purple Light Up has given us a basis to build on. It's a great foundation. Wonderful advice there. Really great. Again, we could keep you here till midnight, but you won't love us for that, Tracy, Suzanne. So again, very last and very short answer, if I may. The last question is, what would be your one tip? Again, for those organisations who may not have uh, got involved in the past what would your one short tip be to put um, the purple foot in the water that's not a very good analogy but you get me Tracy what's your tip start small do something um no matter whether you do it in one office um one branch the start because you'll do more next year and you'll do more the next year so start small and, and do something and if it doesn't work don't worry next year you can make a different decision it's all good I love it very wise words Suzanne anything to add the only other thing I would say would be um don't be afraid to ask your execs for support um they're fabulous at TSB we are very very lucky to have a great exco um but yeah that that would be that would be my my main tip i would say yeah again very very wise words you know not all organizations have access to an executive sponsor but increasingly they do um but that's a good uh, word of, of of support there so tracy suzanne again thank you so much for being part of the uh, team who have delivered the storyboards thank you for walking us through this really interesting storyboard we look forward to seeing how you're going to mine it going forward and uh yeah we will see you both very soon thank you so thanks. much for your time thanks very much thank you thank you suzanne thank you tracy so brent without any further ado heads boggling with ideas let me hand back to you thank you kate and wow just great examples from clifford chance and tsb so really looking forward to sharing those storyboards with the rest of the community and the storyboards of the other organizations that we mentioned so thank you to um, colleagues from clifford chance and tsb for your contributions today 
So for the for the last 10 minutes, then we wanted to update you on this year's theme for Purple Light Up. So feel free to comment and put questions in the chat as, as I'm covering this off. If we can get to them during the session, we will. If not, then we will certainly follow up with you with your on your questions. And in terms of this year's theme, I mean, if we take a step back, the purpose for Purple Light Up, you know, is it, 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 constant. It's about celebrating the economic contribution of disabled employees all around the world. But every year we do do what we call, internally we use the language of a gig, a central gig. Um, so last year it was a 24 hour broadcast that saw us starting with our colleagues at the Australian Network on Disability in Australia and working our way around the globe over a 24 hour period and finishing up with the team at Disability Inn on the West Coast of America. Um, so this year, our theme, many of you I know will know about the theme already and indeed have already started to to plan your contributions. But this year, our central theme is leader to leader. So we are inviting every organization in the world that has a disability employee resource group or network to record and publish a short two to three minute video conversation between their disability network leader and their CEO or equivalent, depending on the, on the nature of your organization. We encourage organizations to publish these on the 3rd of December via YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn and your other corporate social media accounts. And just to give you a, a little insight in terms of our, our the thinking behind this and what inspired this, you know, if, if you know anything about us at Purple Space, and I know many of you know us very well, you will know that we believe that if you are the chair of a disability ERG or a network, then you are in a leadership position. So regardless of where you sit on the on the organizational chart in relation to your day job, you are in a very important leadership uh, position in light of your, your network or resource group uh, role. So on the screen here, we have a, a, a still, this is a screenshot from our leader to leader promo video. So we'll share a link with that uh, in, the, in the chat and we'll follow up, of course, uh, with a link to that promotional video. Um, but it includes some brilliant contributions from ERG leaders and CEOs from organizations like HSBC, like Anglo-American, the New South Wales Department of Communities and Justice, Unilever, Eli Lilly, Network Rail and Enterprise. And those leaders are sharing you know, why they're so excited about joining this global cacoph cacophony of conversations. Um, and I know some of the, some of our ERG leaders from, from the promo video are on the call uh, today as well. I think I saw Lucy Cashin's name. So hi to you, Lucy, and do give us a shout any of any of the other uh, contributors and stars that are on the call today in the, in the chat. You know, this theme has just been, it's been so well received. There is such a buzz about, about the opportunity to participate in this, in this conversation. And I think it's partly because joining the leader to leader conversation provides organizations with the perfect platform to celebrate the economic contribution of employees with disabilities, but it also gives them an opportunity to shine a light on the work of those who are making just the most extraordinary and often voluntary contribution to cultural change. So the disability ERG and network leaders. So we, as in addition to the to the promo video, of course, as I say we'll set, we'll send you the details. We've we've got some brief, a briefing as well that will really give you the the information that you need in terms of how to participate and also what you might like to cover in in your conversation. So the next couple of slides, Angie's just going to move us through, um, give you just some some suggestions about what you might like to cover in your conversations. Of course, you'll have your own messages that you want to convey. You'll have your own um, initiatives that you want. Want to, to 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 launch and, and to trailer as well, but um, you know, based on on the conversations with with the community, these are some of the things that we would encourage you to to, to cover. So, firstly, then. Uh, why your organization chooses to celebrate the economic contribution of employees with disabilities. As I say, this is really the primary purpose behind uh, Purple Light Up. Uh, secondly, why disability ERGs, networks, and or learning directly from the, uh, the experiences of your colleagues with disabilities is such a powerful vehicle for cultural change. And then lastly, the characteristics of purple leadership, purposeful leadership, as we say, there's a conversation between two leaders. And on the next slide, just some further 
suggestions from us about some of the key messages that you may want to cover in your conversations and as I say you'll have many of you you have many messages that you want to to share of your own I'm sure but based on uh, the conversations that we've been having with the members of the community we know that some of the things that you will want to share include uh, the fact that colleagues who head up disability ERGs and networks are leaders um, that if organizations are serious about learning directly from their own people, then they need to invest and engage with their disability ERGs and networks. Uh, they need to find ways of, of, of understanding the lived experience of colleagues with disabilities, perhaps if they don't yet have a, a disability ERG or network. Um, we would also encourage you and expect many of you to want to talk about the, um, the growth of the community of disability ERGs. So, um, you know, whether that's in the UK, the States, Australia and beyond, uh, the movement, the ERG movement uh, is growing at pace. And of course, CEOs and senior leaders um, will must and will want to support uh, the growth of, of disability ERGs. And then the last message here that I'll, I'll, I'll share with you is that this is all part, you know, we talk about movements and you know, we talk a lot about cultural change at Purple Space, but the reason that we choose to support the development of, of visible and influential disability ERGs and networks is because we know that it's the next phase of cultural change. So the next phase of change within, within organizations will be led by employees and the vehicle of networks and ERGs are, are, are the most impactful way of delivering this at, at pace in our view. So, that's it in terms of the, um, the the theme. So we, as I say, we've got our promo video, we have our, our briefing, we'll share all of that with you uh, in the chat and as the follow-up, but we're also absolutely delighted um, and you'll be getting to know a couple of our new colleagues um, over the next couple of months. Um, so we have Graham and Alex who are seconded to us from for a year from HSBC UK. Um, and Graham and Alex will be dedicated to working with our members and the members of our wider community to support and amplify your plans for Purple Light Up. And they'll be reaching out to all of you um, in, over the coming days and weeks after, after this call. And I you know they're in the chat as well. So do you say hi, Graham and Alex, uh, if you're there. So if, if you do have any information, we have our, our, our contact us. Um, email address as well so if you want to reach out to us we will be in touch with you but uh, you can always contact us at hello at purplespace.org as well and just to repeat that again that's hello at purplespace.org so i think we are almost at time so as i've been talking i, I know we've had a few uh comments in the in the in the in the q a so kate if you've been following questions or if you have any last comments um I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to come in uh, in just a moment, but before I do, I'll just remind you that we will be back again. So right in the in the run up to, pur to Purple Light Up. So we'll be coming together to hear a, a little about some of your plans and some of the impacts that other organizations have, have, have found from using the Purple Light Up, leveraging the Purple Light Up movement. Um, so that's happening on the 25th of November. So at two o'clock UK time and going looking forwards there'll be another four meetings in 2022 and we'll come together again in in March to review the impact of, of, of this year's Purple Light Up. So Kate I'm going to bring you back in so if there's any questions that you've noticed in the in the chat or any final thoughts or words that you'd like to to share before we before we say goodbye. Thank you, Bren. So no real questions. You know, you can see the excitement starting to build now, Bren. You know, we had an, you know, a number of um, individuals join us from organisations who have taken part in Purple Light Up in the past, others who might be doing this for the first time. So it's that stage where you're absorbing the ways in which other organisations have leveraged the movement to drive change. And of course, uh, as Bren said, Graham and Alex now, as part of the HSB secondment team, uh, will be supporting us to get the word out about leader to leader so for all of you who are thinking about that then please please contact us so nothing more I think for me thank you again to Lou to Ashika to Suzanne and Tracy thank you so much for your energy and your commitment um, of course thank you for the team and Angie for putting on this show for us today we can see you again Ashika that gives me an opportunity to wave once more um, a big shout out to all of those organizations who are now saying yes to 
leader to leader. So HSBC, we've got Anglo America who are in, we've got New South Wales Department for Communities and Justice, we have Unilever who have said yes, Eli Lilly, Network Rail, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Fujitsu, the list is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it, very simple, you just got to get a quick yes from your chief exec who will allow them five minutes of time just to do a short video and we want to crowd social media come the 3rd of December with some great conversations between great leaders. So nothing else from me, Brent, over to you for the final sentence. Thank you for joining. Yeah, lovely to see you all. Yeah, and just to echo, thank you for joining and we look forward to seeing you on the social media airways on the December the 3rd and of course seeing you at our next session on in November as well. Thanks everybody. <laughs>